Okay, let's talk about graphing exponential functions. And this is just going to be a basic introduction to graphing things like this. So what we have here is an exponential function. It's an exponential function because that variable is an exponent location. So what we want to do is start to uh, learn about the shapes of these graphs and how to graph something like this. So I'm going to do additional videos on how to translate, i.e. shift uh, these basic, uh, basic graphs around the XY plane so we, we could um, uh, move that graph to the right we can move it to the left and go up or down or reflect it that's gonna be a little bit more advanced so we're just gonna focus on the basic shape of exponential functions uh, and we're just gonna stick with this one problem so again this is an introductory level and this would be appropriate for those of you out there that are studying like probably like uh, maybe Algebra 1, uh, definitely Algebra 2, College Algebra, etc. So if you're at that level, you definitely want to stick around uh, for a couple minutes and get a good introduction to exponential functions. Okay, so now if um, you know how to graph this without using your graphing calculator, go ahead and sketch it real quick. It will take you all of about 15 seconds. But um, if you think you can do it, put your answer into the comment section. Be like, yes, I can do this problem. It's super easy. And uh, we'll talk about this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you're struggling with mathematics, I can help you out. I really teach math in a way that anyone and everyone can understand because I focus on making it super clear and understandable. I really explain math. I don't teach it. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level and you're having a tough time, definitely check out my math help program. It can make all the difference. If you happen to be preparing for any test that has a math section on it, for example, things like the GED or SAT, I can definitely help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, definitely check out my homeschool math courses. We were just recently voted number one for middle and high school math and homeschooling by a major national publication. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. So let's get to this problem. So we have f of x is equal to 4x. Now, if you have a graphing calculator, that's pretty awesome. And uh, for some of these more advanced courses like Algebra 2 uh, you, um, and College Algebra, you're going to be almost be required to um, have a graphing calculator, something like a TI-83 or TI-84. And you could uh, plug this in and you could see the graph, right? So you need to know how to use your graphing calculator, but you're also, more importantly, going to need to know how to graph this by hand. So let's get to it, okay? So here is our function. We have uh, f of x is equal to 4 to the x power. Um, or we could write this as an equation. So this is, we would describe this as an exponential function. But I can write this as an exponential equation. This is a function notation. So f of x is equal to y. So y is equal to 4 to the x. So this is, these two are equivalent. Okay, so I can give you these, uh, this problem this way or this way. This is an exponential function. This is an exponential equation. Doesn't make a difference. Pretty much the same thing. Okay, so how do you uh, graph anything if you don't know its basic shape? Okay, so one of the things you can do all the time is create a table of values. Okay, so here's a basic table. I'm going to show you the shape here in a second. So you can always, um, always have a basic table of values. And then basically what you're going to do is connect the dots. So here, let's take a look at this uh, function this way, y equals 4 to the x power. So let's go ahead and plug in some random um, x values. So I'm going to start, let's uh, make this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this would be negative 5. We're going to plug that in for x. We have negative 1. Of course, we have 0 right there. Uh, then we'll have uh, 1, and then we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, where here. Okay, so we have these uh, particular x values, negative 5, negative 1, 0, uh, 1, and 5. So I can plug them in right here. And then when I plug in those x values into my uh, nice little equation, I'm going to get the respective y values. So let's start with something easy here, and then we'll talk about these other negative values. So let's start off with um, when x is 0. So 4 to the 0 power is what? Well, anything to the 0 power is 1. So when x is 0, y is 1. So this uh, corresponds to the point 0, 1. 
that's on our graph, okay? So that would be right here, there is zero, 01. So let's plug in that little point right there. Okay, so how about something like this, okay? Uh, one, when X is one, so what's Y? So that's gonna be uh, Y is equal to four to the first power, which of course is four. So when uh, X is one, Y is four. So if this is one, this is two, three, four, so here is another point that's on our graph. So I'm just kind of doing a quick estimation. So that's this point, okay? X is one, Y is four, which corresponds to the coordinate again, one, four. All right, so we did this, we did this. Now let's start talking about these, um, uh, let's talk about this point right here, five. All right, so when X is a positive five, I have to figure out Y is equal to four to the fifth power, and I can use my calculator. So that's going to be um, 4 to the 5th power is 1024. So we have the point 5, 1024. So right here at 5, 1024 is way, it's way off the chart. Okay, it's way, 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 way up there. So we're not even going to try to attempt it. We just know that it's far, you know, higher than what we can see on this particular scale. Okay, you'll see how I'm going to uh, address this, where this kind of estimation of this point is here in a second. All right, now let's talk about negative one. Okay, let's get into this uh, negative value. So when X is negative one, what is Y equal to? Well, hopefully you remember four to the negative one powers is when you have a negative exponent, that's equal to, basically we put this down in the de uh, denominator, so that's equal to one over four to the first, which of course is one fourth. So at negative one uh, right here, y is equal to one fourth. So if this is one, that's one half. So it might be something like, like right here, okay? So that's this point right there. We have these three uh, points. We have one, two, three. Oh, actually we have four points. And now let's go ahead and talk about this last point, uh, negative five, okay? So when x, uh, when x is negative five, that means we need to find out um, our y value by plugging in negative five for x. That's y is equal four to the negative fifth power. So that's one over four to the fifth. Four to the fifth power is 1024. So that's gonna be one over 1024. This is a super, super small number. So over here, uh, very, very small. Let's go ahead and put that down. That's you know not zero, but it's a very tiny number. So let's just kind of use our scale the best we can and make it like right there. Okay, so you can see here, we're uh, starting to see a shape of a graph. And uh, let's go ahead and now draw a, a sketch that goes through these points. So you wanna make it smooth and continuous, and there you go, okay? Now, if you look at our blue curve here, as it goes up, this five, eventually it's gonna, it's gonna reach that point. You know, let's kind of imagine that right here that eventually this is going to go up and up and up and uh <clears throat> that high value at 1024 will be way up here it's it's off the scale but what we want to focus on is this general uh shape okay so this curve this shape right here is the graph uh, a rough sketch of y equals 4 to the x an exponential function so an exponential function is going to be like this and you hear that word exponential growth like compound interest what happens is, um, and let's uh, take a look at how something grows. So it's kind of growing slowly at first, and then it starts to pick up uh, its pace, and then it starts to uh, grow faster, 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 and faster. So that is the whole idea behind exponential growth, okay? So this is a basic exponential function graph, okay? One of the things you want to keep in mind is to find out y-intercept is when x is equal to zero, okay? That's an easy point. But to get the other points, just build yourself out uh, an x, y uh, table of values. You can use other values, just nice and easy values. Don't, don't go too crazy. And things that can, you can kind of plot on your chart. So some things that are closer to the y-axis and a few other points like so. But if you just remember, the basic uh, shape of an exponential function is like so. Now, uh, for additional videos or in my Algebra 2 courses, algebra, uh, college algebra courses, I think I even teach this in my Algebra 1 course as well, we're going to want to talk about how to um, apply uh, translations uh, to a graph like this. In other words, uh, what happens uh, to that equation 
or to our exponential equation if we move the graph up or we move it down or we move it to the right. These are all translations and stuff or you even reflect this. So this is a whole other different discussion. This is exponential growth. We haven't even talked about uh, something called exponential decay, which is basically works uh, backwards. So there's a lot more to this topic uh, that you know is beyond what I'm going to do in this video. Just remember, you know, the basic shape of the exponential function and how you can graph anything by creating these table of values. So, you know, uh, again, you know, this is a good uh, reminder of how much stuff you learn in algebra okay and there's just no way that you're going to be able to learn this much stuff and truly master without taking detailed notes and practices practicing this stuff but uh you know when you go to do practice if you when you go to do your homework prom or you're uh, practicing for a test if you don't truly have a good firm grasp on the concepts you're not going to really you know all your practice is not going to be effective practice so when you're doing anything learn the concept really really get a, a, a hold on what it's about, you know, get all the, um, the basics down and then practice from there. So hopefully this was a good basic starting video for you. And if that was the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math, uh, calculus and everything in between. So please take advantage of all my content on my channel, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.